Hello everyone, I'm Mr. Bear, and just want to make this video to kind of explain to you what I've found to be some of the best ways to start your child off um, with the best chances of success in learning a new instrument. Uh, getting a quality instrument that is set up properly is one of the most important things. And what we don't want is students to struggle with the instrument, the physical instrument itself. Um, we, we want them to be able to focus all of their energy into actually learning the technique and playing the instrument. So I'm going to go over some of the ways that work best for me and have worked best for most of my students. The first one, which is 90% of my students, they rent their instrument from Picnell. It's a great way if you just don't have a chunk of change lying around to start off with an instrument. Um, you also are, know that you're getting something quality that has my seal of approval on it. And if there's ever something that's wrong with the instrument, Picnell will service it. They come to me several times during the week and they make things right. Uh, it's very rare that I encounter a, a, a problem with one of their instruments, but when I do, it's an immediate fix. And it's, it's so nice to know that a company wants our business at, from Alice Drive Middle School, and they, are, they listen to what I have to say instead of fight me on, yes, this is, this is correct, and this is fine, you're just going to have to live with it, um, which is what I've experienced from some other companies um, you know, in, in South Carolina, I have experienced that, we'll just say. Um, Picknell Music uh, also sells used instruments. Um, I usually have a list, an ongoing list of used student model instruments that people have usually upgraded, and now they're looking to sell their instrument. Buying a used instrument is probably the best um, use of equity. Uh, you are going to maintain your equity in that instrument because when you buy it for $350, $400 or something for around that price for a violin, uh, a little more for viola and, and cello is usually around that $500 range. If you buy that quality instrument, I can then in turn sell it a couple of years later to another beginner. Now, I cannot in good conscience, conscience sell an instrument that I do not think is of that, that quality of an instrument. So if you end up with one of less quality, you end up throwing that equity away in the long term. Now, another option, if you have an extremely gifted student who is very quick, understands things quick, um, then I would suggest looking at a step-up instrument just right out of the gate and Picnell does do dealings in, in, in really higher, higher instruments, but Bernhardt's House of Violins is another one that I would highly suggest. They're based in, in Greenville, South Carolina, have a very good working relationship with them, bought my cello from them. Um, my mother has, has dealt with them for you know decades, uh, probably about 30 years, um, and they're always willing once again, they want our business. So it is quite a drive, but I'm from Spartanburg, and I go up there quite frequently. So um, if I do need to stop by Bernhardt's on the way up or back, uh, that's, that's definitely something that I'm willing to do for a student. Um, and then the last one is finding an instrument online. And this can be very risky because you don't actually see the instrument till it comes. If you're buying an instrument used online, you can go ahead and guarantee almost that you need a new set of strings and that you will more than likely need a new bow. Um, Rehairing a bow is about $60, so it's cheaper usually just to get a carbon fiber, cheaper carbon fiber bow, which is about that same price. Now, the instrument I'm holding here is my instrument. It's 140 years old, and it's not the most fantastic instrument in the world, but there are certain things that are different about this instrument than this instrument here. Now this instrument um, is the one that I'm, I, a student of mine ordered off of Amazon. Uh, it was in the price range between the $50 to $70 price range. I'm not going to be specific. I'm just giving you the facts that I've seen, some of the issues. 
I'm not telling you that this is a bad instrument, but I'm going to just give you some facts. So the first thing is this is how the instrument came. Um, it is not set up, which is not uncommon, but to expect a beginner to be able to set up their own instrument is quite, um, qu uh, it's quite brash. Um, what was interesting to me is it came with the wrong set of strings. It has two G strings instead of an E string on one of the strings. Um, the bridge, if you'll, if you'll go ahead and see, has, um, if you can see my bridge, this is an old bridge that I just had replaced. Uh, you can see there's little notches for the strings. They're measured out precisely. This one, not so much. Strings tend to move around uh, if you don't have those. Not saying I can't put those in, but you know that's something that should be set up from the factory. Um, now, if you look at the bow that came with it, I'll go ahead and compare my bow, which is a graphite bow. It's not a wood bow, but you can see the wedge in it is is very sloppily carved. Um, it's not supposed to look like that. As you can see, mine is, is flat, uh, which means that, that wedge is probably going to fail very quickly. Uh, you can also see the carving on this. This wood bow is, is, is not quite the cleanest carve. There's gapping in, in the ferrule there, right there, which means that ferrule, what happens there is it usually slides off and that wedge, um, that wedge tends to fail and fall out, and then the, the strings actually bunch together. It's actually um, attached back here, so it doesn't just poof all the string, um, all the uh, the hair out. But it's quite frustrating to a child when they have this ferrule that's kind of just running up and down their their bow hair. Um, um, so some of the failure points that I've experienced in instruments like this. Um, that are, let's just say, if they are below $300 new, it is very, very unlikely that they can afford to get the materials that are quality enough to, uh, to maintain uh, their, ugh, ugh, I don't know, it's the, the materials are just not, not there for what we need. Uh, you will see on these um, explanations uh, some of the some of the descriptions will say spruce top, maple back, maple uh, maple neck and scroll, ebony fingerboards. This is equivalent to a car salesman saying the door the car comes with doors, windows, windshield wipers, a steering wheel, and I'll even throw in some wheels. Um, it's exactly it's just this is every single instrument. So saying those things is kind of a way to, to kind of reel in the inexperienced or the um, uneducated. Uh, a lot of times, some of the failure points in some of these instruments is these will, um, these little tail, this is a chin rest, these will actually pull out and they'll strip out. Um, so we have to end up re-gluing those. Um, the tail piece, these are fine tuners is what they're called. They move and they're, they're actually um, tapped into this carbon tail piece. Now, with really quality, um, with really quality materials, this this can work. But even right now, when I'm turning these, I can feel resistance. There's no tension on the string yet, but I can actually feel resistance, which tells me these threads um, are close. They, they usually end up um, failing, and then they get jammed. And I can't do it as a grown man, let alone a little girl with little fingers. Um, now, one of the biggest uh, biggest failure points is not the actual instrument just breaking in half or anything like that but it has to do with the way the wood is and this wood is normally for the way the cut cost with this is they will cut down a tree dry the wood very quickly and put an instrument together and maple takes a long time it's a dense hardwood that's why we like it and we use it um, but it takes a long time to dry completely and get all the moisture out. So main, most of the time, if you're, using, you're making a very high quality instrument, you are drying the wood for years, not drying them for a couple of weeks. And when you dry wood very quickly, things tend to still have a little bit of moisture. And as that moisture works its way out of the instrument, it tends to start warping. This neck, usually with the tension of the strings, will pull to one side. And another compound issue with that 
is if you have ebony, which is the black pegs, the black wood is ebony, and maple, ebony is even more dense than maple. And so with humidity change, the, the, um, the maple will actually swell and the ebony will stay the same. And what ends up happening is these pegs are held in by pressure and they're holding the string back and they will, with the change and the hole in the peg will expand and these will unravel. And it takes a lot of strength to be able to push a peg in to these peg holes and get them to actually stay with that pressure. And it's something that sometimes I struggle with on less expensive instruments. And to ask a middle schooler to do that, I probably have, um, I can count on one hand how many middle schoolers I have that can actually manipulate their pegs. And that's on a very quality, stable instrument that has wood that's been dried properly. So just some things to look out for. I will tell you that most people, when they buy an inexpensive instrument, normally end up paying more um, in the long run because they're replacing all these pieces as they kind of um, uh, fail. Um, but at the same time, what ends up normally happening is the parents uh, don't, the, the kid asks the parent, hey, can you fix this? And then they don't, um, they don't really want to spend that kind of money. Um, and then they end up just, you know, being very frustrated as children to have to deal with these situations. And it's frustrating for me as, as a teacher also. So if you've gotten to this point, you're like, Mr. Bear, I, I can't. I, that's, that's a little much for me. And I, I don't see anything that uh, will work for me. I would highly suggest just call me. I say, call me and talk to me. And I've never been able to, never not been able to find a solution that works for a child in order to play an instrument. Um, I, there are many other options out there. Uh, I just am giving you the ones that work primarily for most of my students. So call me and we will figure it out and we'll get an instrument into your child's hand that's a quality um, a construction so that they can have the best chance of success. Thank you.